In the days of uh, Africa, when, when there was cannibalism, he said they had a golden rule that you must um, always boil the person um, to a certain temperature, otherwise if you eat them, you become them. It's an old African kind of uh, rule. Because it's information. Um, and nothing identifies us more, I guess, with being the body computer as opposed to it being an experience than uh, being a man or a woman. That's who we are. I'm a man or a woman. No, it's the experience we're having. Very big difference. And there's nothing wrong with being a man or a woman. It's an experience. <laughs> nothing wrong with it at all. And, uh, you know, all the best with it. Except that we need to uh, understand it's an experience and then don't we caught in the fact that it's who we are. A few years ago now, about two or three, four years ago, uh, in England, there was a story in all the papers of Freaky the Chicken. Freaky the Chicken started out as a hen laying eggs. And then had this massive, for some reason, burst of testosterone produced and started growing a comb, started crowing at dawn and chasing the hens. Uh, and all that had happened is there had been a chemical change in the computer and Freaky went from a woman to a man. And of course you see this in the manipulation of uh, sex change operations and stuff like that. If what we are is a man or a woman, how can the body computer change from one to the other with a chemical change? It's not who we are, it's an experience. I saw this on the BBC website. Scientists have been able to take control of flies' brains to make females behave just like males. Researchers genetically modify the insects so that a group of brain cells that control sexual behavior could be switched on by a pulse of light. The team was able to get female fruit flies to produce a courtship song, behavior usually seen uh, only in males. Again, it's the computer being manipulated. When I'm writing sometimes, I get up early in the morning in England, and when the sun comes up, the birds start singing. As soon as the sun comes up, the birds start singing. Now, is there, is there, um, is there someone with a, with, with, with a, a baton saying, Q? They just start singing. I mean, uh, he, here we have um, Freaky the Chicken, when he sort of got the testosterone uh, burst, he starts crowing at dawn. Who told him? No, no, the computer program was running. Just crowed at dawn. Another thing that we, um, we have, look at the time, <laughs> another thing we have, we're doing all right, is uh, emotions. We are our emotions. So many people who have near-death experiences, and I've, I've read a lot about this and I've talked to a number of them, they say that when we left the body, we did not feel emotion in the way that we did in the body. Because emotion is a chemical as a chemical expression. And chemicals can, if they're introduced to the body, can affect our uh, emotional state. There was a woman in England a few years ago who, uh, story again in all the papers, 40 years ago, out of nowhere, she went into a uh, clinical depressive state. 40 years, in and out of institutions. After 40 years, which is why she was in the papers, someone said to her, can you think of anything that happened about the time that this started? And she said, the only thing I could think of, she said, is I had 19 tooth fillings with mercury. So she was advised to get the, the mercury taken out, which she did, and go on a mercury detox, and the depression disappeared as fast as it came, and never to return. I've just found myself again, she said. Now, if you'd have said to her over that 40 years, who are you? She'd say, I'm a manic depressive. No, no. The body computer system had malfunctioned because of the chemicals introduced to it. And so often we identify who we are with things that we uh, appear to be in terms of our behavior, when actually it's just the body computer program playing out. It's not who we are at all. Good habits, bad habits. How many, time, how many times are good habits, bad habits, and all this stuff actually coming from the computer program, not from us? Does consciousness do good habits and bad habits? I'm not sure it does. So the way we decode reality um, depends to a very large extent on the state of the body computer. And the way that we live our lives depends on the way we identify who we are. 
and bringing this, this, this computer thing down to the brain, uh, the, the brain has two hemispheres, the right brain and the left brain, with this corpus callosum bridge connecting the two. And they have very, very different roles to play in terms of uh, reality. The left brain is where most people in this world live. It's where the education system is fundamentally designed, cold, calculatedly designed to put us. And that is the part of the brain that perceives everything as a part, that deals in language, that deals in structure. And if you look at the society that we live in, it is a left brain structured society because it is structured by left brain dominated people. When you go through the education system, the indoctrination system, what happens? You progress within it by taking information, overwhelmingly left brain information, words and numbers, holding it in there and then regurgitating it out onto an exam paper. And the better you do that, the more you progress within the system. And if you're really good at that, you go to big universities, and then if you get really good at that again, you get good degrees, and you go into your specialization. Science, the law, often politics, and things like that. Medicine. And then you go through it in your specialization, in your exams. Same thing. And then you, the top ones progress into those positions of society that control the institutions of medicine and science and all the rest of it. And to have got there, they have to have become left brain prisoners as a result of the system they've been through. The right brain is about connection out into the greater self. It's where we get creativity from and inspiration from. That's where the artist resides. R artistic people and creative people are much more right brain than most and that's where they get the creativity from because it connects them out into that realm of infinite creativity and potential. The idea as with consciousness and mind, and this is very much symbolic of that, is to have that corpus callosum bridge passing information between the two so you get the best of both. That's not what the system wants. It doesn't want right brain people. And to give you a, an example of the difference between the two, get my glasses on. This is a lady called Jill Bolte Taylor. She is a neuroanatomist, brain scientist for short. And she had an incredible experience in 1996 where she had a stroke where she stayed conscious for a large amount of time while it was going on and it was a, a stroke, a hemorrhage in the left brain. And being a neuroanatomist, she was able to follow the experience like most people um, would not be able to because of her knowledge. And this is her story. She said she got up wasn't feeling too great, jumped onto my exercise machine, she said, and I'm jamming away on this thing, and I'm realizing that my hands look like primitive claws grasping onto the bar. I thought, that's very peculiar. And I looked down at my body, and I thought, whoa, I'm a weird-looking thing. And it was as though my consciousness had shifted away from my normal perception of reality, where I'm the person on the machine having the experience, to some esoteric space where I'm witnessing myself having the experience. That's what consciousness does when you move into consciousness. You start to witness the mind and, 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 and observe the mind as it's working in its chatter instead of being the chatter. I looked down at my arm and I realized that I can no longer define the boundaries of my body. Because the left brain's shutting down, it's not decoding reality in the way it normally does, and so other levels of reality are able to be perceived because the decoding process is not um, uh, affecting them. I looked down at my arm and I realized that I can no longer define the boundaries of my body. I can't define where I begin and where I end because the atoms and the molecules of my arm blended with the atoms and molecules of the wall. And all I could detect was this energy, energy. And I'm asking myself, what's wrong with me? What's going on? 
And in that moment, my brain chatter, my left hemisphere brain chatter, went totally silent. Just like someone uh, took a remote control and pushed the uh, mute button and total silence. Because it's not decoding anymore, the chatter stops.